Hello, American Go Association. I'm Chris Garlock, Managing Editor of the AGA E-Journal, joined once again by Michael Redman, Nine Don Professional. Today, Michael will be reviewing one of his own games, a game he played against the famous Ring Kaiho 9P in the Gose Tournament. As always, before we get started, I want to thank all our AGA members, and if you'd like to support this content as well, please consider joining the American Go Association at USGO. Dot org. All right, I'm so excited, Michael. I can't tell you I've been really enjoying these uh, these AlphaGo games, but I, I got a real hankering for a human-human game. How exciting is that? You're waiting for some mistakes, right? <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> never, never. So yeah. uh, this is exciting. You against Rin Kai Ho. I mean, uh, can yeah. just give me a little backstory on this. I mean, have you played him before? I should know this. But... Uh, this is my second tournament game against Rin Kai Ho. I, I played a number of um, informal games against him because uh, when I was younger, a long time ago, I was um, playing. I was in his study group, so I went to his house, and the main part of that study group was that we would be playing against each other after. Um, studying opening variations, then we would have a game. And so we played just about everyone. And so I got some chances to play Ling Kai Ho at that. And also I've played um, some public games, a public game or two against him. Um, so but it, how, those aren't really tournament games. So if we're talking about tournament games, then it's just this and one other game. So how old were you when you oh, sorry, went to his house? Game. What? How old were you when you went to his house? Oh, that was... Um, I think I was in my 20s by yeah. that time. Um, it was more or less throughout my 20s. It must have been really exciting for a you know young young player like you to be hanging out with Rin Kai Ho. Well, it was a whole group of us. Like he had um, um, everyone, just about. There was a lot of players um, going to his house, and um, just one of the guys. It was yeah. You know his his wife would um, make a meal for us, and so we would eat and then go back, and it was just. Um, that was probably what made so many people go there because it's wonderful food. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I would love to talk more about that, but uh, yeah. folks here want to. We'll, we'll sneak some more of that in as we go along because okay. I want to hear. Yeah. I want to hear about his house. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was in Japan. It was it was very special to go to somebody's house in Japan. It did not happen very often in my experience. Mm. It's pretty unusual. Yeah. So mm -hmm. all right. So what can you tell us about this game before we get started? What should we be looking for? Well, it's my first game this year, my first tournament game in 2018. Um, okay. And um, it was a very unusual chance to play against him because you have to, usually you have to do fairly well to play against a famous player mm -hmm. like this. So, um, but I, it just happened that I um, got paired against him in this case. So it wasn't as if I won a lot of games to get there. But still, it was a special thing. Yeah. All right. Special for us, too. All right. Let's, uh, let's take a look at it. So in this game, I have black, um, and um, I'm playing the mini Chinese opening, which is actually pretty unusual, um, because for me, that is. Um, mm -hmm. But recently, it's been sort of um, in fad. It's, 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 it's sort of the thing that young, pe young players are playing right now, um, partly because there's a go playing AI that, that likes to play this opening. So there's, mm -hmm. and, and we saw this in AlphaGo games, too, also. We did. Um, but um, it's being played by Deep Zen Go a lot, um, and that's the Japanese AI that plays Go. And did um, you have a plan going in into this? I mean, did, that you were gonna you were gonna try out, or what, what was your thought? Uh, well, there was all sorts of variations of this that I sort of revisited. I used to play this um, uh, about twenty years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, there was a short period where I liked to play this opening, um, but. At that point, they didn't have this version of the mini chai. It was the it was the one where black plays uh, plays here. The, the no, what might be called the normal mini chai. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, and this is more modern. I think this came after I'd more or less given up playing it. Mm. And um, part of this is that I'm trying to play moves that I don't feel so comfortable with because I'm just trying to change my style to, mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Um, it's all this stuff that I'm learning from AlphaGo and the other AIs that um, gives me new ideas. I think. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been talking about that in our interviews for the uh, for the AlphaGo book. But I, I have to say, I'm I'm a little surprised that uh, I mean, trying uncomfortable moves against Rin Kai Ho seems a little, <laughs> a 
Um, well, you know, I um, after studying all these AI games and stuff, like I, I as I've said before, I, I'm beginning to doubt just about everything. <laughs> and so I, I'm feeling, I, I feel uncomfortable with the moves that I, I like to play before um, also. I Even see. though I was relatively successful with them, I, I still feel uncomfortable with them too. I don't really know what I want to do. So I'm just trying, I'm giving myself sort of tasks and I'm so trying to enjoy trying out new, new stuff. Cool. All right. Let's so you'll see some new stuff in the following games too. Um, I've marked up the board a little bit here. Um, and these are the A and B are the moves that AlphaGo played in its self play um, series with White. So White would play in a, a Kakari at A sometimes or invade at the 3 3 point sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, the splitting the side like this is the human move. It's the move that humans have played most up to this point. And I play one Kakari um, and White Pincers. And I, I consider that um, a good exchange for Black to get in. And then I play here. So this is um, sort of a kind of a standard variation if we're just looking at the right side, um, where black is trying to, um, is expecting white to play something like this. Um, an extension on the, set, on the third line would be the most normal move. And black is going to play like this to make, um, to sort of build vertically on the mini Chinese opening. Because of that stone at C, black wants to play B to make a, instead of making just a fourth line territory, black wants to build out towards the center. Okay. And black has follow up moves like such as black D and black has a push at E with which black can continue to build on the lower side. So there's potential there for black's lower side to expand into the center. Sure. And this is an even opening. It's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. But uh, Lin Kai Ho, when he played here, you know, this, mm. this already took me out of my, um, pre-study, so, so I was on um, sort of on new ground already here. Yeah, is this a just, this looks like an alpha, sort of like alpha goers, doesn't it? Um, it's, it's still a human move. It's a move okay. that has been, like at this point, white can play, also play here. Uh, white can play the game move, or actually some people have played here in an mm. attempt to get a better base. Um, so there's various moves that white can play here. But of course, this is the most common move. This sure. is the move that I was expecting. And this is the move that I had prepared for. And I had all these, um, I, I'm only showing you up to this point, but there's all sorts of stuff that I was expecting to happen after this. And I had studied up on it, but but that didn't happen. So so that was the end of um, my study before the game because <laughs> this is completely different. Wow. Uh, the idea of this white move is that it's, it's not really making a very solid territory on the right side, but white is trying to take sente. So if black plays here, which is the most normal move for black, white will play uh, kick once here, and then white can play away. Mm. And so there's an invasion at C, but if black invades at C, it'll be easy for black to take away that white territory. There's no white territory on the right side anyway, um, as, of, as of this point, that is. Um, so black can play at C, and there's going to be no white territory there, but white's going to be able to make shape in the center of the board. And what I didn't like about this variation is that the focus of the game sort of shifts to the left side of the board where white has an advantage. And um, originally I wanted to start a fight on the right side, obviously, where there's, there's a lot of black stones to start with. Sure. So um, I played a very aggressive move at this point. I, I attached here. Whoa. I cut. And uh, this is sort of on impulse. Um, but it wasn't really so hard to figure out that it's going to be an interesting fight. So, mm -hmm. so I, I didn't really know whether it was going to be good or not. Um, but white really has two choices. White can pull back in the center or, um, or you should say extend in the center. This is sure. what white did or pull back here. So this is the move that Dean Kaiho played. And this is another way white could have played, in which case um, I was going to uh, play the Sarari here. Mm -hmm. um, and the ladder favors white. So if white wants, white can take in a ladder. But black is going to get a very nice territory in the lower right area. Yeah. And also, um, uh, the, the position of um, black C in the upper right corner, um, it's good for black to have that at a safe distance from white's, what has become white's solid shape on the right side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's a good positioning for that particular stone. And also, there's a point at, B, at D 
um, where black can peep later. And that's a kind of an annoying peep um, that um, white will have to answer later in the game. And so there's a lot of variables here that make me think this is pretty good for black. The, the lower right corner territory is just about as good as one can expect from this opening. It's, it's well over 20 points. And so this is this was my plan if my opponent pulls back. Um, well, actually, it's the simple plan. What, what's complicated is if white doesn't take in the ladder. Like it, it's a more complicated fight if white extends here, wow. in which case I might continue to fight with something like this. And this would be a really complicated, it would be a very tough fight. Like if white, uh, white would get to play once here, let's just go into a very, something like this might happen. Um, and it would ju just be this big fight that would uh, spread out in the center of the board. Um, and probably a pretty even fight. Uh, but it didn't happen that way. And just curious so we'll to the game. how yes. much, because this was all off of your plan, how much uh, time did you have to take reading this out? Because it's a tournament um, game. Well, I had I had done so much studying of various variations in the lower right quarter of the board that I was just, I had a feeling that it was, um, I'm, you might say I had a feeling it was going to work or it was going to be an even fight at least. So okay. I, I wasn't really reading very deeply at this point. Right. Okay. Um, but I had the feeling that this move was supposed to be bad. I, I didn't, I, I, I was, I was, I was thinking that this was maybe the better move. Yeah. And I had the advantage also that Lin Kai Ho is a player who likes to spend a lot of time thinking uh -huh. in the early part of the game. And so I got to think on his time. So actually I, nice. I had an advantage in time throughout the game because of that. It's the players who play quickly that make it more complicated because mm -hmm. um, then I have to pace myself. And so this is a forced sequence here and black connects. And, um, and there's a point here that's sort of bothering me um, throughout the game at this point, um, or for, for a while here, the timing of when I should play this Hane, because sometimes this Hane is really effective mm -hmm. in changing white's eye space. And then sometimes it's, it has a negative. The, forcing white to answer it actually strengthens white in some mm -hmm. cases. Mm -hmm. So um, I was, even, even with this uh, Kosumi towards the center that I've just played, um, I was debating the, the fact that maybe I should have played the Hane and I wasn't really sure whether it would have been good or not. Um, so this is going to come back to us later in the game when I actually find a pretty good time to play it. Um, but I decided not to play it yet. And why it attaches here. This is a nice attachment that is actually more dangerous than it looks because if black carelessly plays a Hane here, white's going to cut. Right. And it's going to take some, some extra effort <coughs> That some like it's not as if white's going to win the semi or anything, um, but white's going to get some extra forcing moves here from that stone, that cutting stone at B, mm. and so this is going to give white very good shape towards the left. So that that's no good for black, and so I extend down, and that's the final forcing move white has. Like if white continues here, um, for the time being, that's not going to be forcing. Mm. It's going to be a very big move, but for the time being, it's not forcing. So white moves out. Um, and I start to attack white on the right side, and white plays here. And this was a turning point, actually, because at this point, um, it, was a, it was a point where the flow of the game is supposed to change. I have to choose, really, between attacking on the right side, continuing mm -hmm. to attack on the right side, or doing what I did in the game, which is to surround the lower side. Mm -hmm. And when I surround the lower side, I'm taking immediate profit and that means that my position in the center of the board is going to get weaker because I, i'm going to be playing moves to surround the lower side and the meanwhile white white's group is going to be getting stronger because white runs out so this exchange is going to strengthen white and because of that it's going to um relatively it's going to weaken my group in the center my mm -hmm. uh, i'll mark that i'm talking about uh this black group right um, and that means that I'm going to have to play more specifically on the right side of the board. So, for instance, if I wanted to attack white on the right side with a move like this, then I should I should really be doing it now, when black's group in the center is still strong. And we're going to see why in the actual game, 
<laughs> because I just did what I, I just said I shouldn't do. And I, uh -oh. I uh -oh. did that after, after taking the territory. And we're going to see white protecting this group that's running out. And I have a cutting point on the fourth line. So I um, go back and protect that. And white protects in the center. And we can see that black has gained something like 15 points on the lower side. Sure. And it's really important for me to have this settled group there because um, otherwise, like if we go back to that point, um, if white gets to invade the lower side, then white's going to have the offensive in the whole area. So this is a, uh, locally, this is a very effective move. But I, as I was saying, this means I have to play a bit more peacefully on the right side of the board. So the, the game move is this one, which is, was an ochre play. Mm. And um, I would suggest now that I should have just played oh. as close to the fourth line. I was looking at that, but I thought it was too vulgar. So the peep. So it's well, what, the peep what, is, yeah, the peep what, came in good. Uh, it, it helped me a lot in the actual game when things got really exciting. Um, and there's, it's, 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 a, it's not a wasted move. Okay. It's, a, it's a, probably a good, uh, a good exchange. And white will be able to live, of course, and then I can switch and the game will, the fight on the right side of the board is over now. And Got I it. would switch to, to B. And it's an even game. I'd, I'd say it's an even game. Um, at this point, when I say it's even, it, um, I might as well say I don't know, but I, I think it's pretty <laughs> even. <yeah. laughs> wow. But instead, I played here. And like if white was really timid and did something like this and something like this and was just trying to make a life, then that would be relatively okay for black. But actually white can jump out here and white has potential to attack black in the center now. So this was a very dangerous way for me to be playing after strength. And you can see these stones in the center, um, these stones that I'm about to mark, these white stones are making a big difference because that's creating some influence towards mm -hmm. the center which is putting pressure on Black's group. And so Black is in danger of being isolated here. So suddenly it's a very dangerous fight for Black. Um, so I play here and I play the Knight's move and White and the latter favors White. So White plays this attachment here. So now I'm, um, although I'm sort of in trouble in the center, yeah. uh, White's group also is not alive. And at this point, I found the perfect timing to play the honey. So I played um, this honey. Sorry, this one. Ah, OK. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you a variation that shows why I have to play it now. Because if I play, um, this is what I did with the next move in the game, like this. But if I do that without the honey, then we can expect this kind of variation. And what Black wants to do is Black wants to play the net here, the geta in the center. So uh -huh. it's a squeeze white. And white will have to break out of it. And white will have to extend. This is a vital point. But at this point, um, B becomes a very hot, it's a hot spot. It's a, it's, um, it's a very important point. Like if I play the honey now, if I play this honey now, white will just jump out at B. Right. And the upper side will be much more important than those three stones, even though right. they're, by, they're, they're the cutting stones, but uh, the upper side has become bigger. So if I continue on the upper side, now white's going to be able to make a life with this exchange. Mm -hmm. So at this point, by playing the hanging connection, which is a kind of a tesuji that you can find in semiagal problems, at this point, white's already alive. And so white, white can live with this sequence. That's nice. And so this would be a disaster for black. And so playing this exchange, starting with the Hane, is going to take away white's eye space. And so I actually did a lot of reading here um, to figure out well, that, that variation I was just showing you. And it, the same variation is going to work in the actual game, too. So we're going to see this coming again. So black plays here, plays the Tari, the latter favors white. Black can push through here. And now black can play uh, the second forcing move here to take away white's eye space. And because of the fact that cutting at A next, uh, let's just do that as a variation, like cutting here next, this saves the three stones. Um, while taking the white stones on the side, um, it also um, makes a connection for these three stones by um, 
making it impossible for white to push through and cut. That's right. That's right. And short so, liberties. Yeah. Uh, this is just perfect for black. So, um, and with this timing, there's no way for white to play away from this. White has to answer it here. Um, and so I've taken away white's eye space. And so the previous variation that I was showing you is going to be a um, it's going to be a semi. -I. So uh, let's see, I have that variation somewhere. Um, I did it this way. So um, so I to show you that variation that we were talking about earlier, when black does have this marked exchange, um, I started with the cut here, mm -hmm. and so white uh, breaks out of the of the geta the net. Uh, a is a vital point. Like, what if white jumps out here now? What, black will just play at A, and that will be terrible shape for white. Oh yeah. Wow. So white has to extend in the center. And the point is that when I play here now, it's going to be a semi. -I, and I actually had read out that I'm going to win by one move. Wow! Um, wow! Wow! I'll Some... show you that variation. Uh, <laughs> white can hem black in. Um, this is where the semi -I starts, and black takes this um, final big important point. And it's pretty straightforward now. Like semi eyes are easy because you just count them. <laughs> so everybody we'll just, at home, everybody at home is reading this out madly. Yeah. So so we can see that black is won by um, by one move. Obviously. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's too much territory. Even though white has this big wall in the center, it's not going to be good enough. Uh, um, this is uh, this is this is all of that uh, that AlphaGo study, I think, coming into play. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty long. It's a, something like a forty move, forty five move variation, I think. Yeah. Um, but it is pretty much a one way street. You might sure, sure. There's yeah. Very few variations to that, so that made it relatively easy to read it out. Mm -hmm. So, like, I had this forty move variation worked out. <laughs> um, you'd be surprised that. Um, there's this move pretty early in it <laughs> that I didn't think of at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> so white answers here and I play here. So this is the variation. Um, I started with the cut in the variation that I just showed you. Right. Um, it's it's sort of the same thing because after white cuts, white's going to push through here anyway. Right. But the other uh, order of moves is what if white pushes through here? And this is the move that Ding Kai Ho didn't play. It would have, oh. um, and white pushes through here. Now, if white continues with the cut here, it's just going to be the same thing. If white continues with the cut here and tries to escape, it's going to be the same thing. But the move that I had completely overlooked is that white can now play um, play this move, which threatens to take bl three black stones one way or the other. Oh, that is so cool. And... Um, Black can't really afford to give up the three stones in the center. So black's going to take these three white stones and white's going to take these three black stones. And, you know, usually when black is taking a group of stones toward the center and white is taking a group of stones sort of in the corner of the board, you would expect that it's good for yeah. black. Yeah, But actually it's, it's the opposite. And the reason for that is that capturing these marked three stones connects all of white stones. So now yeah. we have no, no weak white, white stones. And if we go back to the original plan that Black had in attacking White on the right side, part of that plan was actually to make a Black territory in the upper right corner right. while attacking White. And White still has that invasion at sea. So that, that corner is not a Black territory. I haven't oh, yeah, I see. In fact, if White can jump in at sea, in some cases, that would be a weak Black group. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the Black group in the center, you would think it's thickness. But it's actually not thickness because it doesn't have any weak white group to attack. Right. And so I'm not going to be able to use it as thickness. In fact, it only has one eye so far. <laughs> so in <laughs> some me, cases, give me some good in. news here. Yeah. <laughs> There's no good news. And I think, well, actually, you can see that black does have a lead in territory. Uh, okay, because I started, I started by taking territory. So I, right. I have a lead in territory. And I have Sente, so I'm going to move to, to the upper left with probably a move somewhere around here. Um, but I would rather play with white in this position. I think white has a, a slight lead. It's it's probably a it's a it's a, a lead that an AI would be able to run away with. I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, and I, I don't mean to rub salt in the wound here, but I, I just the other your other sequence was so beautiful. You're talking um, about this. It's forty sequence. No, no, not that one. I want to see what what's the what's the what's the variation. So there's that. 
Right. And this is the this is the move that I had read out that was right, the right, right. Right, right. Okay, that one I saw, but but and I I had the whole semi I read out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want to I want to I want to I want to see. Yeah, I was proud of you too. But I I want to see. So so it's like it moved number one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Had you just not even looked at that? Well, you know, it's it, it. If we assume that white's going to play the cut at the mark point, it's the same variation. So yeah. maybe it's maybe it's move number three, this one, which is the difference. And had you, that's the one, and that's one I. Went, and so had we even like looked it, at it. It was really sort of counterintuitive for yeah. me to think that white would sacrifice these three stones. Absolutely. After trying to break out of the net, like this move seems to be trying to break out of the net. It does. It does. And then white just goes goes ahead and sacrifices the three <laughs> stones, which is something that um, it just didn't occur to me. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> and my opponent Ninkaiho actually sort of. Um, he was he sort of caught on to it. He halfway caught on to it, but he tried to be more efficient because he started with this move. So like he's trying to just give away two stones instead of three stones. Uh, he's trying to do he's trying to do this variation, basically. He's trying to do this variation, only he got a bit greedy maybe, or he he, he tried to be too efficient. Um, because in this case, like if black plays here and white plays here and here, then in this case, it's just two songs. So that's yeah, even yeah, better. Yeah. Which, and, and you, but you wouldn't do that at that. I mean, you're not going to go for just two I songs. definitely did not do that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so okay. that's, he's, he's sort of hoping for that. And so I don't think it, it might be that he, it, it, it's not that he completely missed this variation. He was just trying to be a bit more efficient. Right, 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 right. But okay. I didn't even think of this move. It, like, I, I, after <laughs> pushing through here, um, it, it just didn't occur to me that Mike White might just go ahead and throw away those three stones. No, because as you say, I mean, White is doing something over here, so why would he completely go the other way? Wow, wow, wow. So Fascinating. That was a complete blind spot in my reading. Like, um, even though I had done, um, read throughout the variation so, yeah. so completely, so thoroughly, I, I did not think of that variation. Mm, mm. Mm. But I lucked out because White started here, and in this case, I can actually play here, which is a kind of a super dangerous move, but it works in this case. <laughs> um, for instance, like if White plays here now, then I can just throw away the one stone. This would be a complete disaster for White. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So this would be good for Black. Like even if White continues here, um, well, Black has a number of ways to do it, but I could just play like this. And I'm, I'm going to escape out and capture the white stones on the lower side. Wow. So this would be not so good for white. This, this would be bad. Mm. And so let's see. So we're at this point, and it's really difficult for white to take advantage of the weakness in black's position, because I'm still sort of looking at a squeeze here, um, whatever white does. So white pushes through, and I connect. So this time I can connect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, you and just, so, you. so when this happens, this exchange here, this exchange of this stone for this stone is actually helping me a lot because it helps my black group uh, move out towards the lower side. It feels like you really dodged a bullet there, doesn't it? Oh, uh, very lucky, yeah. yeah. So this is the game move. And with this move, White has committed to break out of the net. Right, right. Uh, the other move is to push out here. Um, which would be better, like for instance, if um, it would be better if black answers underneath like this, mm -hmm. because then white would be able to get out immediately. And the point is, white doesn't really want to play an exchange of this move for this move, because then black would be pointing out and surrounding white on the right side. Right. But the problem with playing here immediately is that black just connects here. And it's really difficult for white to escape with these <laughs> Excuse me. These four stones. Uh, they're a bit in there. They have a lack of liberty. So white white has to struggle a little bit to get out and black can squeeze like this. And this is another very I was pretty good in my reading, except for that one point there. Actually, um, this is another variation where black gets to squeeze white and white still has to run out here. And then the cut here is really it's a it's a very strong attack on white because white has such terrible shape on both sides. In fact, the, uh, the mark group here, the mark, the group beneath black that I've just marked here, um, it's going to have trouble escaping now. So the whole yeah. group here is in danger of dying. And of course, I already have a lot of territory in the lower right in this version. So this is working well for black. 
Um, so yes, I do, I do think that all of this reading I'm doing here is a result of my study of the AlphaGo games because um, I, I was not accustomed to be doing this much reading in most yeah. of the games. Yeah, this is some amazingly deep reading. Wow, wow, wow. So White starts with the cut and pushes out to, to avoid being um, this variation. So right. White cuts here and then pushes out. Uh, so this was sort of forced, but this is already a bad variation for White. And you can see again, I'll, I'll just point it out once more, how this exchange is really helping Black now. So interesting. And so it's the wrong order of moves for White. Yeah. And I get to play this connection here. Um, and then I get to escape here. And so I've captured the three mark stones. And by getting the connection at A, I've also got a fairly strong position in the center, which mm. means, and White has to squeeze out with that group on the right side. So this is getting to be a difficult fight for White now. Wow. So so when did, uh, and, and we've gone through it, so we don't need to do it again, but just a question, the, uh, when, when when you realize you know that white had a different plan right was it when when he made the first move or, or it wasn't he made the, when he made the mistake or you know to trying to be more efficient that enabled you to dodge the bullet oh you mean that variation that was bad for me yeah 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 let's just let's just highlight it just to let's see it would it was um oh maybe i shouldn't have tried to, this one right yeah um it didn't occur to me during the game at all you, I, I found this after the game. <laughs> oh, cool. All right, so you didn't. All right, that's that's what I was wondering whether you had <clears throat> that moment. We go, oh no, <laughs> no moment at all. Okay, all right. Um, it was completely a blank spot, and I even after the game when we discussed the game, I, I it turned out uh, Ning Kaiho didn't suggest that variation either. So maybe it was a blind spot. For him too. Okay, all right, all right, fair enough. So we're into this variation. Um, this and you know, Ninkai is just... a player. This is uh, the game. This, this is the game. game. Okay, it's worth that. All right. Uh, he's a player who loves to do discussions after the game. So, okay. like, you can go on for hours and hours. He, he's um, not as young as he used to be, I guess. So, um, he used to go out and go continue into the middle of the night. Like, he wouldn't go home. Wow. He was so, um, um, he, he loved the after game discussions so much. But nowadays, this time he let me go fairly after a couple of hours, I think. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I guess so he, gets, point, he gets to decide, right? You don't get to say, oh, I have to go home to dinner. Well, it's you an honor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. happy to have a discussion with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Cool. And so now White has to move out. So White, White this is a Tesuji to break out into the center. And white can force with this, but after this, the next white move is going to be is not going to be forcing. Um, so black has captured three white stone these white stones here, um, and white has to escape. And I'm playing to I'm making sure the corner is this corner that corner is actually a bit. I have to be careful about it, so I'm playing mm -hmm. very carefully to protect the corner. And I'm my plan is to allow white to escape towards the upper side. And if I can get Sente to play this point on the in the lower right, mm -hmm. which is a huge move. Huge. It's gote yeah, for but, white, but it's a huge yeah. move. So if I can allow white to escape on the upper side and get to play that mark point, then I'm going to have a big lead in territory. And of course, if we look at the rest of the board, white's going to have the initiative throughout the rest of the game. Right. But I, I'm, I'm figuring that this territory I get on the lower side is going to be big enough to win the game. So we're going to see that in some of the following variations. Um, so white plays here, and white actually um, refused to allow that to happen, and we got into another semi actually. Um, so I'm going to show you what could have happened. For instance, if white had just connected here, um, I would extend here, and white would be able to live by capturing the one stone. So that would finish the fight here, and then I would play here. And so this is the kind of peaceful variation where white lives. And white doesn't have very much territory to speak of, like just this territory attached to the living group here. So, so it's something like five, six points. Um, I, I should say seven points. And then uh, if we look at the left side of the board, there's no clearly defined territories yet. So white has only something like seven points. Black has about 10 points in the upper right corner. Um, I forget how big this territory was, but it's, it's really big. 
it's, it's probably close to 50 points, Black's lower side territory. So Black has this huge advantage in territory. And although White's going to be attacking Black um, from here on, White's, White's going to start by attacking Black in the um, on the upper side. Mm -hmm. It's it's not going to be good enough to, to catch up. Right. Um, so Black has a lead. So White didn't choose to play that way. Instead, White plays this way, which is more dangerous. Um, but if Black is timid enough, then it's going to be more effective. Mm -hmm. So I take the one stone. And again, playing here would not be so effective because I would play just one Atari, and then I'd play here after all. And with with capturing a stone at this point, I actually have um, a bit extra um, potential ice space also. So this would be similar to the other variation, this one, uh, that I was showing you before. So it's the same same basic story in which I have enough territory to, to, to win the game. You can, so uh, White, like, yes. you, can just, you can just alpha go on, basically. Yeah, yeah, it was as close to that as a human can come anyway. <laughs> uh, so he plays an Atari here, which, uh, strictly speaking, this was an overplay. Um, but um, you could say he, uh, he was trying to sort of intimidate me a little bit. Like if Black connects against, in the game I just yeah, played here. Yeah, of course. And I, I'm going to capture the right side. It's going to be a semi with my group in the center. Um, so like if I connect at A, let's, let's do that variation too. If I connect at A, Matt, in um, a million years, are you going to connect I, it? A? I would, I would bet everything yeah, I yeah. have. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> even, even I wouldn't connect it. A. Yeah. We should. <laughs> so I cut here, and actually, White can save the group, but it's going to be bad. Like if White plays here, this is just going to be bad because Black takes the one stone, and this is even worse than the other variations. Oh, yeah. Because now yeah, Black's yeah. whole connect is up on the right side. It's, yeah. So this would be no good. So white uh, takes the co, and I kill the white group on the right side. And white cuts again. And white has co threats for this co. And so I back off. And so we have a black group with just one eye. Um, but white's group, let's see, I forget. It's, it's something like seven liberties. It doesn't have so many liberties. It's one, two, three. Eight liberties. So it's. Um, I don't really have to go into so much of an effort to, to win this scenario. Mm -hmm. And so again, it's a question of how much white can get in return, but it's already looking a bit. And of course, white gets this huge move on the right. left side. Right. Um, so there's some justification, but it's, it's looking like a win for black at this point. So white continues um, to try to harass the black group, um, but there's, it's just not... It's not going to work for white. The, and so um, white plays the, is chasing black, and I play here. Uh, this is a point where, like, if white plays here, I'm going to play here. Mm -hmm. And we can see kind of a, like, if white plays here, this is going to be a ladder. The whole, the whole white side is going to be That's cool. And so I would be able to live with Sente. So that would that's, be one way for me to finish up the game. Yeah, so yeah. white plays on the outside here. And so this is looking bad for white already. Um, white plays here. And at this point, I already have something like um, nine or 10 liberties. And so yeah. I switch to the corner. Wow. And I, and I play the cut here and I slide. So I'm alive on the, on the left side. And white tries to attack the center and um, pushes through and cuts here. And I can actually escape with this move, which makes me I have A and B. Oh, very clever. Yeah, so I was I was sort of waiting for that. And you can see by by these moves here that uh, Ninkai was already in overtime. Yeah. I think I had a little time left, actually. So now now you can see I've marked up these white stones. Um, I've captured these stones also. So that's the end of the semi position in, on the right side. Um, and white um, finally tries to attack these black stones on the left, but that doesn't really work either. Um, and I've marked it up a little bit. There's A, B, C, D. Uh, that's the sequence I think might happen after this. White A, mm -hmm. black B, white C, black D. Um, blacks should have no trouble living on the side here. So mm -hmm. that's a live black group. And white doesn't have enough territory. So this is where white resigned. Wow. Wow. But really after the, uh, um, uh, if you go back to the uh, the, the white play, 
it's, it's, it's just not good enough for white to just live on, on the right. It's just, it's just not going to be enough, is it, before it starts to co? Oh, you mean there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so let's see. Um, for instance, yeah. well, let's go back a little bit further. I mean, you showed the variation where white can get this the... This one where white yeah, can get yeah, the... Yeah. Um, this would, uh, it would take longer for black to win the game. Um, but I would have so much territory on the lower side that I, I don't feel that it would be likely for white to, to win. Right. Mm. Right. So, 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 uh, so Rin was basically just trying to push you around a little bit and see if he could get something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. No. Maybe a bit impatient, but th this, I think white would eventually lose this game also. Right. Is there other than other than uh, if you played the uh, the sequence uh, in, in the, that you showed earlier um, that he you know, didn't play, where he gets to, you know, is is there any other chance for White there? I mean, there, there there's that sequence you show where where it looks pretty good for White, frankly, if he if he plays it in the right sequence. And uh, so that would be this one, right? Yeah, yeah, that looks that looks um, really tough. That was for like you. the one one big chance for White, right? Right. Um, and it's not completely over, but um, I definitely would rather be playing with white in this game. Yeah, that, I mean, it's sort of all, all white's problems are solved. It's, it's quite nice. Exactly, yeah. Those are very important um, cutting stones that white has just captured. Yeah. And it would really, I think, put black in a, in a really, I mean, a really challenging position in terms of what to, what to come up with. I mean, that, yeah. you, you have, don't, there's nothing to attack. So that all goes back to my move here, which was trying to attack white on the right side. Right. When it didn't really um, work well with my, my previous move at A, where mm -hmm. I'd been taking territory and I had strengthened white with the sequence up to B, so I should be <laughs> playing a bit more defensively right. on the right side. So this is where I messed up. Right. Uh, and it, it looks to me like white had just that one, that one chance there um, with this move. Yeah. Um, in which he, he should have changed the order and played it this way. It's such a, such a, it's so interesting. And I was thinking too that that uh, again oh, sorry, because of all your uh, your your reading, but you know, <clears throat> it doesn't account for blind spots, does it? <laughs> well, it just didn't occur to me that White would push through there and then throw away the three stones. It, it was um, definitely a blind spot. You would, you would prune that tree a little prematurely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I, I got to say, great game. Congratulations, uh, Michael. Really fun to uh, to see some of your games. Of course, folks, we will have more AlphaGo games. Not to worry, not to worry, but uh, we're going to have a few of Michael's games here. So thank you, Michael. Great uh, analysis, as always. Uh, and one last thing before we go, I want to give another big thanks to our AGA members who make videos like this possible. And uh, if you'd like to support this content as well, please consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. And we will see you all next week. Thanks so much for watching.